Hallelujah. I hope somebody is friendly with the preacher this morning. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we continue from where we stop because if you're not here when we stop, when we started, you may not know where we're going, but um, we've been talking on vision, running with a vision, running with a corporate vision. And this is where we're going to be. This is, I think, the fourth um, part of this message. So we want to see what the Lord we have us say today. Amen, somebody. I've been asking the Lord to speak to us. And um, I, this morning I said to the Lord, your people are coming all the way from their house, not to play. They are coming to receive from you. Hello, somebody. And because God knows you're coming, that is why he has prepared something for you. And I'm sure he got a word for you. Please open your heart and receive. Amen. So let's start from here. It is important to understand that every vision we go through a trying stage. Every vision, if God has given you a vision, that vision will go through a trying stage whether you like it or not. Hello, somebody. I was listening to a Pakistani prime minister yesterday. He said something that touched me. He said in about 30 years ago or 40 years ago, that Pakistan was one of the most growing nations in Asia. That nations like South Korea and Malaysia came to learn Pakistan, Pakistan, Pakistan growth strategy. They came to learn why is it that they are growing? What, why is it that you know, things is happening in Pakistan? He said, but along the line, they got it wrong. He said, just like every nation, he said, once in the lifespan of a nation, they will miss the road. He said, we have missed the road, hello somebody, and we've been struggling to rediscover what God have called him to do. He was in China. So he said he went to China to learn how they were able to build the nation of China. So if you have a vision once in a while, your vision will face trial. Once in a while, you may even miss the road. Hello, somebody. Some of us have dream, and it, at the moment it looks like nothing is happening with that dream. You may have missed the road. It, it, maybe you don't even have duration at the moment. But God is still interested in what you're doing. Amen? Now, it is important to understand that every vision we go through a trying stage. If not, it is not God. The Israelites believed Moses the first time Moses went to them and said to them, uh, you've got to understand that God has sent me to deliver you. And they were all excited. Can we see that scripture? It's 4, 30, 31. They were all excited. They said, whoa, we've been praying for deliverance. Hello, somebody. We really need deliverance. They were very, very excited when it was announced that God was interested in their plight. Hello, somebody. Then, then Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of the Israelites. Hallelujah. Keep going. And Aaron repeated everything the Lord had said to Moses and performed the signs before the people. Keep going. Then, watch this. Shall we read together? The people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had paid attention to them, God is paying attention to you. And that he had seen their misery. They bowed down and worshipped. Hello, somebody. When the vision was shared with them, they were very excited. Hello, somebody. Sometimes when you share your dream with people, they are very excited. You told your, you know, your best friend, said, I'm getting married tomorrow. In three months from now, they said, whoa, praise God for you. Hello, somebody. But when they got home, uh, you know, after one month, they started thinking, why? Why must she get married before me? Hello, somebody. In fact, the first time you share with them, indeed, they were happy with you. They were excited about it. But they, by the time you know it, they start thinking, why must she get married before me? I heard a man, a man of God, he said he was in a city called Enugu somewhere in West Africa. Hello, somebody. And this lady came to his office, to his hotel room, and said, man of God, I want to sow a seed in your life, but I want you to pray that my friend will not get married on Saturday because I want to marry the fiancé. And she was going to be the bridesmaid. This is a true story. I know the pastor. Hello, somebody. 
and I heard it from his mouth. The lady came to her, 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 his hotel room and pleaded with him, say, he, he brought what we are, like 100,000 naira, and said, I want to sow this seed in, on, in your life, man of God, and in your ministry, but I just wanted to pray that this marriage culture, that it doesn't come through, that this wedding doesn't hold. But I guarantee you, the day this thing, that vision was shared with her, she probably was excited, was clapping and said, whoa, it's going to be a great wedding. But along the line, the enemy sowed a seed of evil in her heart, and she started fighting her friend. She was supposed to be her bridesmaid. Oftentimes, when you share your dream with people, they will be happy with you. Hello, somebody. In most cases, they will be happy. But after a few days, the enemy will start ministering to them. You mean she's going to be your manager very soon? Hello, somebody. It means she will be using the best car in town and not you. It means she will change her wardrobe and not you. Why must it be her? Why not you? And so they start fighting you. When, it, when Moses shared this vision, Moses and Aaron, the vision of deliverance with the people of Israel, they were happy about it. They were excited about it. But we're going to see more if they continue with that happiness. I mean, somebody move to the last scripture. I think chapter 5. Is it chapter 5? What? <laughs> the Bible says, the Israelite poor men watched this so that they were in trouble. When they were told, you cannot reduce your daily culture of bricks. What is this? And when they left Pharaoh, they confronted Moses and Aaron. Uh, who stood waiting to meet them. May the Lord, what is this? May the Lord take note of you and judge you. Are you excited this morning? Remember in chapter 4, where we just read, verse 13 to 31, they believed the message. They believed the dream that was shared with them. They believed in the vision of deliverance. And they worshipped and they were so happy that God had sent a deliverer to them. But then in chapter 5, now the same people that worship and praise God and congratulated themselves. And Moses saying, we don't know that God has, has paid attention to our plight. They are the same people who said, may the Lord take note of you and judge you, Moses and Aaron. Are you the somebody? <laughs> they said to them, because you have made us reek in, in front of Pharaoh and his officials, putting a sword in their hand to kill us. Hello, somebody. Yes. So Moses went back to, to the Lord and asked, Lord, why have you caused trouble for these people? Why did you ever send me? Are you here, somebody? Yes. So ever since I went into Pharaoh, to speak in your name, he has caused trouble for these people, and you have not delivered the, your people at all. I'm going to come back to this scripture. Moses, the people said to him, look, you have conspired with Pharaoh to kill us. Remember, it was their, their vision to be free from Egypt. Hello, somebody. It was not Moses' vision to be free, because Moses was already free long before the time. Hello, somebody. But they cried and said, God, is, we have dreamed to be free. Hello, somebody. Just like Martin Luther, who said, I have a dream. It was their dream to be free from Egypt. And then God sent a man. And this man went with this message, went with this vision, and said, God, I have a plan for you. And I've come. I'm the channel of your deliverance. I've come to deliver you. And all of a sudden, we were told, the same people that rejoice. Hello, somebody. And praise God for thinking about them. Turn around and say, Moses and Aaron, you are thief. Hello, somebody. You are a liar. You have conspired with, with Pharaoh to kill us. Is that why you came? You just came to kill us. How will you feel if you got a great vision? And by the time you see this vision with people, everybody are rejoicing. They are clapping for you. They are saying, man, you must be smart. Hello, somebody extra smart, but immediately anything goes wrong with that vision, they will say, oh, she's too ambitious. Hello, somebody. He's too ambitious. Hello. But when you share that vision with them, they say, whoa, we're going to make money out of this. Something good is coming in the city. Life is about to change, but once it goes wrong, they turn around 
They were eating dinner. They were eating lunch. They were eating breakfast. They were talk about you. Am I saying to somebody? You would expect that immediately share your great dream, your great vision, what is in your heart. You would expect people to start rejoicing, not to start clapping, to start, you know, helping you. Because oftentimes we think simple because we have a vision. Everybody should come helping us, supporting us, congratulating us. Hello, somebody. But you've got to understand, for the fact that you've got a vision, people will oppose you. Even those that are not meant to oppose you will be the ones that will come after you. Every great man, no great man that has ever gotten it easy. If you're a great person, you must have gone through so much. Hello, somebody. You must have. I was listening to Jesus this morning, and he said he went through so much. He said, he said in fact, before his mama died, she couldn't eat, she couldn't talk. He, he was the one changing and cleaning her. He lost somebody. She said, when, he, when the mother died, he was broken. And they, in that same season, they, it, 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 no, his 13 years old daughter came and said, I'm pregnant. He lost somebody. What should you do if you're serving God and you're serving your heart out and you know that you're serving God and you're having all sorts of problems? You've got to understand that your faith will be interrogated. Hello, somebody. Your believing system will be interrogated. Mm -hmm. Things that will happen to you that will make you question your faith and even question your God if your God is alive. Mm -hmm. But I came to tell somebody this morning. I came to announce to you Amen. that your God is alive. Amen. It doesn't matter what men are saying. It doesn't matter what your friends have told you. I came to announce to you your God is alive. Your problem will not define your future. In the name of Jesus. It may look, if you look at what you're going through right now, you probably will not see God in it. Sometimes I question myself. When we started this ministry, I questioned myself many times if I was really called by God. Because I went through hell. I went through all sorts of things. I became a firefighter. Hello, somebody. When you are a firefighter, it means you're quenching problems. Hello, somebody. There's a problem here they call you quenching. By the time you finish quenching it, another problem you quench it. And you keep on wondering, if you call me, why all this trouble? And some of you, being in that situation, you've been caught up in such a situation where you begin to question your God. Even though you know that God is real. And Moses said to God, if indeed you called me, why am I going through this? I'm asking you somebody. He said, ever since I came, announcing your plan to these people, ever since I came, sharing your dream with them, their problem has increased. I expected you, you know, to have turned things around for them because you sent me for them. Th think about it. God asked you to go and free some folks out there. But when you got there, things become more difficult. Yet you had a word from the Lord. I would expect God to fix everything and lose somebody because we think that God is a Mr. Fisher and he knows how to fix your problem in a sections. I lost somebody, but yet when he got there, he was, you know, he saw hell. He went through fire and through water. David said, Lord, I've gone through fire and through water. He said, but at the end, end you have brought me to my worthy place. How would you glorify God if you've not gone through fire? How would you glorify God if you've not gone through water? Hello? Men that have not gone through things hardly amount to anything. If you see great men and women that have imparted their community, imparted their life, imparted their world, if you go and talk to them, if they open their heart and show you their wounds, you wouldn't like to be like them. Who wants to be like, you know, like, um, who wants to be like big get in this place? Hello, somebody. Who wants to be like big get? Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. You want to be like big get? You want to be like George Soros? Hello, somebody. Are you ready to pay the price? Hello, somebody. Who wants to sit at the right hand of the Father? Who, who, who wants to sit? You want to sit by his right hand? You better choose the left hand, somebody. <laughs> because if you want to sit at his right hand, you will have to spill your water and your blood sometimes. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. 
for Jesus to sit at the right hand of the Father, he had to spill his blood. Hello, somebody. If you want to become the man or the woman God wants you to be in this earth, you must be ready to go through fire, to go through water. Your life will be tried. Your faith will be tried. People will question your integrity. Your personality will be interrogated. If you don't believe in yourself, you will quit before your time. And say to somebody, I'm not going to quit in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You must resolve in your heart. You must say to yourself, no matter what I'm going through, I'm not going to quit. I heard a word from God 10 years ago that he has called me to change the world. And that is what I know. I refuse to listen to any other voice. There are too many voices that are speaking to us. Hello, somebody. The voice of Esau or the voice of Jacob. Am I talking to somebody? But you must choose the voice of God. You must change the voice of God. Once God has spoken, he has what? Spoken. He's not going to change his mind. Am I talking to somebody? When, when, when Saul was called and he met Jesus on his way to Damascus, he wanted to go and persecute you know, God's own disciples and apostles. On his way to Damascus, he met Jesus. And when he met Jesus, he got blind and his friends took him to Damascus. They couldn't take him beyond Damascus, and they couldn't do more for him. Sometimes God will bring certain people in your life that will take you to a certain level of life and keep you there. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when they took him to Damascus, they kept him in Damascus, and they didn't know what to do with him or with his plight. Mm -hmm. However, God spoke to a man called Ananias. Hello, somebody. He said to Ananias, I got a servant in this city. And Ananias was saying, talk to me, tell me about it, Lord. And God said, his name is Saul. And Ananias said, no, God, it can't be Saul. Am I checking somebody? It can't be Saul. He said, he is the guy that been killing people and destroying your servant. The Lord said, I don't care about it. I've chosen to use him. Oh, nobody's talking to me. Can I show you this scripture? Maybe I can show it to you. Please turn to the book of Acts chapter 9. He said, I don't care about what you've told me. I know he has killed people. I know he has messed up. But I have chosen to use him. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, probably from 10. Maybe I can show you that. Oh, Rabba, Rakaba. This is not part of my preaching, but I want to show you this just to let you know that it doesn't matter who is opposing your personality, opposing your calling, opposing your job, opposing your career. If God have a plan for you, nothing can take you out. Lord, somebody, what is now in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, God will be speaking to some of you. In this season, to go and solve specific problems. Amen. Hallelujah. Said, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Oh, Ananias, here I am, Lord, he said. Keep going. He said, get up and go to the street called Stretch. The Lord said to him, to the house of Judas, and ask for a man from Texas named Saul, since he is praying there. Keep going, Lambrosigiria. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and placing his hands on him so he may regain his sight. Some of you are about to regain your sight in the name of Jesus. I don't know what has blinded your eyes or blinded your future, your duration in life, but I came to announce to somebody, God is about to give you back your spiritual sight. For the fact that we see physically doesn't mean that we are seeing Hello, somebody. You could be seen physically, but spiritually you are blind. But in this season, God is bringing you into a flow that will change everything and turn your life around. I say, God is going to turn your life around. I'm prophesying to somebody, it's your season for turning. It's in the name of Jesus. Why he was there praying, hello, somebody, and said, God, what has happened to me? I just meet a strange being. Who are you, Lord? And God said, I'm sending a man to change your life. I said, to change your life. Ha, 
how much harm was it? Lord, and he answered, I've heard from many people about this man, how much harm he has done to your sins in Jerusalem. Therefore, he's not qualified to receive his sight. Hello, somebody. He's not qualified to, to receive anything good because he has done all sort of harm against your people. What is, and, and, and he has authority there from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. He continued to convince God. And he just wanted to convince God that Saul wasn't good enough to be free. Amen. Have you seen people that are trying to make God believe that you, you are too good to receive anything called miracle? But what is but? Anytime you read the Bible and come to a point where you see but, probably forget everything you have read and concentrate what happens after bad. Hello, somebody. But the Lord said to him, to Ananias, who have given God many reasons not to set Paul free, go for this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and the sons of Israel. Amen. Oh, you don't know how to scream somebody. I said, this is the place to shout. When everybody have written you off, a lot somebody, and all they knew about you is your past. They have written your vision off, and all they knew about you is all the negative things you've done. But God is still saying, I got a plan for him. He said, look, I forget everything he has done. Forget everything you've heard. I got a plan for that man in spite of his past. I got a plan for the vision of that woman in spite of what she's been through. Go for him because my hand is on him. Say to somebody, it doesn't matter what you think about me. Oh, you're not quiet on me. Say to your neighbor, say neighbor, it doesn't matter. The lie is against my life. God, God planned for me. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> the Lord says, I know all that you've told me about Shananias, but yet I want you to go and put your hands on him because I have an agenda for him from time immemorial. In eternity, I called him. Hello, somebody. I called him even before his sinful life. I lay my hands on him. I got something for him, and I want him to get into it. And some of you are here, and you're crying because some folks around you are opposing your vision. They're opposing your life. They have, you know, they, they have messed your name up in the society, in your community. Do you know there are people that have just, you know, uh, uh, they have just murdered the good name of their neighbor. And because of what has happened to you, you don't want to do anything anymore. A lot of somebody, you just don't want to move with your life because somebody told lie about you. You may have told lie about me. You may have even told truth about me or against me, but it's God thinking in the same land with you. Amen. Hello, somebody. As long as God is by my side. Hello, somebody. Back to the PowerPoint. As long as God is by my side. Oh, lover. Go, go back to that scripture again. I saw something, that 15. As long as God is by my side. This vision will be successful. As long as God is by my side, this dream will be successful. God is going to bring men from afar, you know, to bring to pass that which he has written concerning you and concerning the church in the name of Jesus. But the Lord said to him, go for this is my man. So this is my chosen instrument to carry my name before Gentiles, kings and the sons of Israel. He said, he is going to be speaking to kings and not to common men and not to ordinary men and not to, un and no, he's going to be talking to uncommon people. Hello, somebody. He's going to be hobnobbing with cream citizens and sophisticated people. Some of you, when you look at yourself right now, just because of where you are, you may not even believe, hello, somebody, that God does something great for you. Jacinta Adam never knew she was going to be a prime minister. But she was not even the labor leader. Prior to the election, it was three months to the election, she was made 
you know, the leader of Labour Party. I lost somebody. And that day I heard her made a speech. She said, we, we are going to run the campaign of our life. I lost somebody. Some of you, all you need now to make it happen is to, is to start running the campaign of your life. I lost somebody in spite of the pain. There was no future for labor. Three months to the election. Even the opposition said labor is disintegrated. The action fused. And they don't even know where they are going. But within three months, hello somebody, there was just intermania all over New Zealand. And some of you were captured by it. Hello somebody, within three months. And sometimes when you look at your life, you think that you are finished. You think that it's no hope. You think that no one is accepting you. Even the people you are called to deliver are the ones calling you liars and thieves and conspirator. And when you look at yourself, your heart is genuine. And you know that you've done nothing. Yet nobody around you seems to believe what you carry. Am I making sense somebody? Almost everybody you know, you know, are suspicious of your personality. Immediately you walk past them, they will start keeping their back nicely. Uh, <laughs> because the thing, you, you have gone bankruptcy, and so if there is possibility, you might steal their back. Hello, somebody. Because of your situation, they begin to write, give you some names. Hello, somebody. And they, they give you some appellation. Anytime they see you, they say, you see that broken lady, broken woman, everything is broken in her life. But God is saying, I've got an agenda for her. I've got an agenda for him. In the eyes of man, you are finished. But in the eyes of God, God is, God is, oh, 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 oh. that's my man. Oh, oh, oh. Am I checking to somebody? They are in their room talking about you. They say, he thought he's going to take the nation. When he was starting that business, I know he was going to fail. And some people say, he was arrogant thinking he's going to take the whole New Zealand. Oh, was he the only one that ever started business? All of somebody. And they will not be eating you in their dinner. You are in your house or in the altar praying, La Bagade, Ziga Bagada, Gada. Hello, somebody. But they are in their dinner table talking about it. Hello, somebody. Who, who is God going to listen to, to, to the man who is gossiping or to the man who is in the altar crying? Hello, somebody. As long as I know how to locate the altar, I'm not going to be swallowed by that problem. Once I know where the altar is situated or located, I will come out free. Come out empowered. Come out announced. Come out chosen. Sometimes we tend to give up just because your vision is opposed. Hello, somebody. When you oppose me, that tells me that God is in what I'm doing. Hello, somebody. If you've never opposed me before, if nobody has ever opposed me, that is a sign that I'm going to heed the rock. It means God is not interested in what I'm doing. Or maybe what I'm doing is not, easy, it's not even big before the Lord. But anytime God, when God gives you a vision, God's vision is always a big vision. And the enemy knows that once that vision materializes, you're going to invade their kingdom. So they will always come against you. So once is God, they will come after you. But if nobody is talking about you, if nobody is coming after what you're doing, it means you are doing a smart thing. The devil is not interested in it. But if you're doing anything that will change the world, the enemy will match you as a number one target. But they will never win. Because the Bible said the earth is of the Lord and fullness what thereof. And everything in it, even the devil. So as long as you keep coming to the altar and keep worshiping him, keep bringing that vision back to God, hello somebody, God will always change the situation. That's a doctor that came here. Lord, help me to get back here. That's a doctor that came here. He's going to come here this week again. He's been trying to get, you know, a job. School in China, but been having, finding it difficult. He went to practice in London. That's always been one problem or another problem. Always a problem. He's been believing God for the last five years to practice. 
So he told me to submit a certain document, but he's been waiting and waiting, and nothing is happening. Somebody told him to come and meet me. So he called me. I said, okay, come. So when he came to the house of the Lord, we were talking in the office. I said, I've looked at you. It's like, so if before you get your own things, you always go through so much. He said, that has always been the case. So he wanted to put a you know, man into my hands. I said, come bring it to the altar. He brought it to the altar. So and then my spirit said, climb to this altar. Stand like a high priest against every other demonic altar. So I climb here. I said, Lord, I stand here as a high priest over your son's life. And now I revoke whatever has come against him. I command the delay to be over. And I ask the document to be released. I make a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And Lord, may your altar come against every other altar. After we finished praying, the next day, my wife was there when he called me. The next day, after waiting for years, the document was released. The next day. Why? Because he came to a higher altar. Now he's going to Britain on Wednesday to finally practice. Hello, somebody. I say, you are going to do that which God have called you to do. I don't care what the delay may have been. God is interested in your situation. Sometimes the enemy will continue to pause you. Hello, somebody. No matter what you do, the enemy will come. But sometimes, if you know how to come to the altar and present the vision before the Lord, hello, somebody, God in his infinite mercy will revise the situation. I got to know Sister Premila. I, I, just, this just came to me now. There was a, years ago, somebody told her about me. So she came, and she was literally crying. And she said, when my mother died, but woman of God, I'm free to give that testimony. Before she died, she asked me to place her my hands, think on her on her knees or on her hands. And uh, to swell or to promise her that she was going to take care of, of their genius sister. And so from that moment, she began to carry that lady as her own daughter. She loved that sister pretty well. So when the si uh, that sister finally, you know, you know, once in a while, young people sometimes want to be creative out there. <laughs> Hello, somebody. So she wanted to taste the world. So she, she, found, she, she, you know, she ran out from the church and started doing her own little things. And then our sister came. I said to her, I said, don't worry. God is going to bring your sister back to the kingdom. All she wanted was to see her sister saved. Some of us, we don't know how to cry for lost souls. We don't care about anybody. Hello, I always remember how she was talking that day. She just wanted her sister back. I said, okay, I'm going to give you fasting to do. Maybe three days fasting. Think about it. Anytime you're ready. And at the last, I'm going to join you. And then the last day we'll come together and we'll pray. We call the soul of your sister back in the kingdom. She told me, give it to me. Now I'm going to do it this weekend. I said, are you sure? Hello, somebody. She said, I want to do it this weekend. So that weekend she started three days dry fasting. I think that was her first time of doing dry fasting. Taking only water. She was in the judge for the sister. Some of you here, you don't know how to cry out to God for other people's problem. So, after the fasting, we met somewhere at Redat Road, and we prayed together, and we threw the soul of our sister back to the kingdom. And then, I think after one month or so, the sister was bringing somebody, I didn't even know she was going to be coming to a church. Somebody was bringing somebody to a church at Ryan Place. She was just driving the lady because the lady couldn't drive. So she didn't come to church. She just came to help the lady. So somehow she came and sat for the church to be over. And she was sitting at the front. The power of God took her like a wind. And God visited her in a very special way. And she started coming to King's Mercy. Hello, lost somebody. Now, why? Because somebody took, you know, accepted responsibility. The woman of God didn't go to the street and complain against God. She came to the altar seeking for God. And after that prayer, God turned the situation around. Because there are things we say sometimes, you think, she is here now. Hello, somebody. And God changed the situation. So whatever God 
have planned for you. It doesn't matter what the enemy is saying or have done against it. Once God got a plan for your life, that plan will come to pass. Let other people you know oppose your vision. Oppose your life. Oppose everything about you. God will always find ways to change that situation. Why do we come to church? We come to get a word from God. Sometimes we think, that, you know, it's only when the preacher is jumping up, oh, that's when you get a word. No. You can take one verse of the scripture and let somebody and say, God, this is my word and I'm going home with it and it will change my situation. And God will. You see, I, uh, let me quickly show you a few things. Oh, Lord, help me. Now, everyone... Not everyone embraces the, embraces the vision when it is at night. Hello? Some will embrace it with what? Excitement, as we saw in that scripture before. And some will not, will not. Joseph was opposed when he shared his dream to his brothers and to his father. If you look at that scripture, you know, in, that, in verse 5, when Joseph shared his dream, immediately we were told, hello somebody, we were told that even his father, Hello? Oppose him. Then Joseph had a dream. Have you ever had a dream before? I don't mean nightmare. I mean real dream. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You see, when Joseph had a dream, when he told it to his what? Brothers. They hated him even more. Hello, somebody. Some people just want you to be a fool and just do nothing. Hello? They are happy seeing you begging and borrowing. But you shall not be a borrower. You shall be the lender. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. He said, what is this? Then Joseph had the dream. Okay, move on. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. I know you're against me. I know you don't, you don't like me. But they're not going to shut what God is doing. You will not shut my mouth. Hello. There we were we are by, you know, by the sheaves of grain in the field. Suddenly my sheaves stood up. You have to stand up. And your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheep. Keep going. Are you really going to reign over us? His brothers asked him. Are you really going to rule us? So they hated him even more because of his dream and what he had said. Now, do you see why people hate you? You people are too quiet this morning. People hate you because you are doing something. People don't hate folks. Who is hating a madman in the street? Hello, somebody. Have you seen anybody that says, I have a problem with a madman? Or I, have, uh, no, I cannot forgive this madman? Have you ever seen that before? People will rather have you stand in the street and beg than to have you share a concrete vision of the future with them. They hated him because of what? Of his dream. Oh, hallelujah. Then he had another dream. Even though they hated him, God did not stop giving him dream. Hello, somebody. They, you, you, you would expect, okay, because they hated him, God would have said, okay, I don't want to give him any more dream because they will hate him more. But God continue to give him dream. God will continue to give you dream. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter who is hating on you. What matters is the agenda of God for you and your generation yet unborn. Yes. Then he had another dream and told it to his brothers. Look, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun is even more bigger. Hello, somebody. The sun, the moon, and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. Yes. So shall it be unto you. Yes. I said, this time moon will bow down to you. The sun will bow down to you. It's going to be a big, big, big vision. In the name of Jesus. You see, you are driving a small car and some people are hating on you. How much more when you move to your seven bedroom flat? Say to your neighbor, can you handle it? Oh, nobody is talking to me here. Say, neighbor, can you handle me? Tell us somebody. You are just, you, you know, using that car that breaks down every day. Hello, somebody. The car have a good body, but not a good engine. 
So when they look at the body of the car, they hate on you. But now God is I'm taking you out of the level of common car to give you something that will last. The Bible said, Joseph said, the Bible said, and this time, I love that book. You know, in other words, you, 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 are, you are jealous of me for that little thing I share with you. He said, but this time around, it's not just about shape. This is about moon and sun. Oh, oh nobody talking to me. He said, this is about moon and sun. And I saw moon and sun bowing down before me. So shall it be unto you. I see moon and sun bowing down before you. I see 11 stars serving you in the name of Jesus. You just started something small and some people are rising against you. And God is on the throne laughing at them. Say, oh, they don't even know what I'm about to do with my son. They haven't seen nothing yet. Help me talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you haven't seen nothing yet. You haven't seen nothing yet. You better get ready. Say to somebody, get ready, get ready. Get ready. It's going to be more than moon. It's going to be more than sun. Even 11 stars. Not even one star. Am I talking to somebody? Say to somebody, get ready. Am I about to appear? Am I about to appear? I have not appeared yet. Something good is getting ready to happen for me. It's in the name of Jesus. Something good will happen to this ministry. Am I telling you somebody? We will do the things we don't have the capacity to do. The things we don't have the capability to do. We will do in this nation. It's in the name of Jesus. I don't care if you heard of me. Heard of me, but let God be for me. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody say, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, you've got to understand that men will come after you. And when they come after you, that is when God released the best of glory, the best of power, the best of anointing in the name of Jesus. And even 11 stars and moon and sun were bowing down to a young man. That is highly prophetic. That is a dimension of power. It's a dimension of authority. It's a dimension of ruling over nations. When you see stars begin to bow down to you, it means nations are going to bow down. When sons are bowing down, it means great men and women will bow down. There are some of you in here, men in authority will come bowing down. In that same work, in that same you know watch place, at that same workplace where you've been humiliated, you're going to take over the seat. You're gonna be the boss of that lady. You're gonna be the boss of that man that have been persecuting you because the hand of God is on your life. In the name of Jesus, help me give somebody a high five and say, I came to announce the hand of God is on my life. You may not know it, but the hand of God is on my life. In the name of Jesus. I'm prophesying to somebody. Because you may be waiting until a preacher call your name and tell you the color of your shirt before you believe. But the prophecy you need is in the word of God. The greatness you need is in the word of God. The revelation you need for the future is in the word of God. You say, this time. <laughs> this time. You were jealous yesterday and this time. Oh, you hated on me because I put a new cloth and this time. I just put a new shoe and you were angry, but this time. I got a new job where I was just a foreman. You were angry, but this time. I am going to be the boss of this company. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. I am doing great things and somebody is hurting on me. But God is still working in my life. God is going to unfold a new agenda. A new agenda is going to be unraveled. Agenda will confound the world. This agenda will confound your neighbor and men of your contemporary. I came to prophesy to somebody that God is about to unravel something new and something mysterious. For you, God will do something that will baffle as many that know you. 
They are thinking you're going to die, but I come to tell you, you are not dying not. It's not time to die. Because God has not finished with you. Has not finished with your family. There is something he's about to do. As many who want to celebrate your burial, they shall be buried. I said they shall be buried in the name of Jesus. Anyone that don't grave against you, we shall go to celebrate their burial. The Bible says, suffer not the wish to leave. I came to announce to you that this accident is not for you. This destruction is not for you. You will not drink that poison. You will miss that accidental discharge because there is an agenda that is yet unraveling. God is about to unravel some things that will baffle nations and change the destinies and rule kings. And because you are yet to get there, you can sell me to Egypt, but I'm still yet to rule. You can throw me to the pit. I'm still yet to rule. It doesn't matter the conspiracy. You can hand me over to the Ishmael Lord. I'm still yet to rule. Until this vision came to pass, even Potiphar's wife can't betray me. So am I talking to somebody? If she betray me, the Lord will show up through the betrayal. You may have betrayed me yesterday, but it was meant to be. Am I talking to your neighbor? I'm talking to your neighbor, not to you. I say you may have betrayed me yesterday, but that betrayer is meant to connect me to the king. The king is about to have a dream. And that dream will change my life. That dream will change my nation. That dream will save my brothers. That dream will redeem my family. Somebody betrayed me, but my hope is in that betrayal. My deliverance is in that betrayal. If you've been betrayed by your party first, I came to announce to you that it was meant to be because God is doing something new in your life in the name of Jesus. When we say in the name of Jesus, all we mean is let it be according to your word. Hallelujah. Say to somebody I'm blessed. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But I think I'm talking to somebody. Say to somebody I'm blessed. Oh, switch back to that. Grand room. Oh, look, Abrando. Even Joseph, you know. Do you know, son, even Joseph's father. Say, can we and your brothers bow down to you? Sometimes have you seen people that you truly believed in? These are the ones you truly believe. Even if every other person rejects you, you don't expect them to. I believe Joseph had hope. In the father. Hello, somebody. Joseph at that time had no mother, but had a father who loved him. But please go back to that, that the, the scripture before then. But the father who loved him, in that case, came after him because of his dream. I used to hear somebody remove your watch and throw it away. Can I remove mine? A little somebody. What is then he, he he had another dream, right? Okay, go back to go go change. What is he told his father? Are you there, somebody? He told his what? His father and brothers about this mega dream. I'm a mega dreamer. Hello, somebody. Help me talk to yourself. Say, I'm a mega dreamer. And so shall it be unto you. He told his father and brothers, but his father rebuked him. What kind of dream is this that you have had? Hello? He said, are your mother and brothers and I going to bow down to the ground before you? Hello, somebody. At this time, the mother was dead already. But the mom, the father was even saying, is my, your mother in the grave going to bow down? <laughs> Hello, somebody. Before you. He believed everything about Joseph, but not this one. Have you seen people that believe everything about you? But there is one thing they don't believe. They love somebody. They believe, no doubt, that you're, you're good looking. They believe you're beautiful. They believe you're educated. They believe you have a good degree to a PhD and 10 masters. But they don't believe you're going to get a job with all those degrees. Oh, you're not quite, you're quite a <laughs> They believe everything about you. 
but they don't seek success. No matter what you do, they don't think you will succeed. His father, if your father, who is your father, start disbelieving you, no? Start having concerns about your future. What will you do? You would like to quit. Because he's the, he's the, in, in, the, in the house of jo Joseph, of Jacob, the only person that loved this man that had God's hand on him was his father. Every other person in that household hated him. But this, the only person that loved him is having some problem, conflict with his dream. Hello, somebody. So what will you do? You will stop dreaming. You will say, Lord, come take this dream. I better be in good relationship with my father than to, you know, keep dreaming and keep having problems. Some of you do not know how to say, even let the word help me. But I'm ready to do that which God wants me to do. Some of us want to be politically correct. Politically, you just want to, want to do that and everybody wants it to do. PowerPoint. Hello, somebody. Let me tie us and close. You just want everybody to accept you. If they don't like you, you're not happy. Hello, somebody. David don't like me. David is no longer my friend. Hello, somebody. And even Kalishta is hating me. Let them hate on you, but let God love you. Hello, somebody. If everybody in this church love you, they know how to hug you and embrace you and call to you, and then if God helps you, are you loved? Hello, somebody. Why not everybody here come after me, but I have the King of kings and the Lord of lords? If the King of kings and the Lord of lords is still backing me up. As many we, that help me will come clapping for me. Amen. Will not be long from now. They say we help him, but we, we know there is something about him. He never gave up. I'm talking to you, somebody. Amen. Let God love you. Hello? So people might hate your vision, but don't hate your vision. Don't give up your vision just because people hate you. Don't give up what God have called you to do just because people have given up on you. Hello? Oh, Lord. Okay, let me quickly share this on a close because I'm looking at the atmosphere. Some of you are a bit quiet right now. So I'll soon close. Hello, somebody. I didn't drive home where I'm going with the, with the message, but... No, I call this stage a breakdown or a breakthrough stage. When people reject that which God have told you to do. Hello, somebody. At that stage, it's either you break down or you break through. Our breakthrough conference is coming. It's a great conference. Somebody was telling me yesterday, said when it asked me yesterday, when is the breakthrough conference coming? I said, January. He said, I love to come to breakthrough conference. And the title of this conference this year is what? Fresh Cloud. Are you there? Some of you are not looking at those flyers. I say it is called what? Fresh Cloud. In other words, if your cloud is a bit, if your cloud is dried, in this conference, God is bringing you to top you up. Hello, somebody. I don't know if your cloud is dried. God is going to give you a new cloud. So when you feel you are under a dried cloud and everybody have hated what you carry, what you've got to do at that time is to make a choice whether you want to trust and God and break through or you want to keep listening to what people are saying and break down. Hello, somebody. At this day, the visionary needs to make a choice whether to lean on men or to lean on God. So we read in, in Proverbs 3, 5 to, 5 to 7. He said what? He, Proverbs 3, 5 to 7. Let's see what it says. It says scripture, everybody knows. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Right? And do not rely on your understanding. In other words, the Lord says, I know you can think. I know you've got some brain. But then when you're going through stuff, Learn to suspend your thinking. Hello, somebody, and rely on me. 
because I know how to get you out of it. Hello, somebody. Verse 6, it says something. It says, think about him in all your ways. Hello? In all your ways, in all you're doing, think about him. Don't exclude him. Don't minus him. Don't deduct him from what you're doing. Don't discount God. Say, think about him, and he will guide you on the right path. When your Israelites reject you on your mission journey, they say, turn not to me. Go back to my, Okay, let me show you Jeremiah quickly before I show another turn and then I close. When everybody rejects you, turn to God. Jeremiah, I think 17, he said, this is what the Lord says, cause is the man, are you there, who trust in mankind. Hello, somebody. Cause is the man who trusts, you know, on his uncle, brother, father, mother. Your boss is a cause is that man. If you see people that are not trusting on God, they are already cursed. Hello, somebody. Who makes human flesh his strength and, and turns his heart from the law. Keep going. He said, he said, he will be like a janiper in, in, in Araba. Araba means a patch island. He cannot see when good comes, but the way is in the patch places in the wilderness. In a salt land where no one lives. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Keep going. He said, Bless, but he said, blessed is the man. Hello, somebody. Who trusts in the Lord. Amen. Whose confidence Indeed, it's the Lord. Hello, somebody. If everybody can just what you carry, and you keep pushing and say, I'm going to make it, no matter what they say, he said, blessed are you. He said, he will be like a tree planted by water. It sends its root out toward the stream. It doesn't fear when heat comes. Hello, somebody. He said, even though if he is on him or her, he or she doesn't fear because their trust is well, on the Lord. He says, it doesn't fear when he comes. In other words, he will come someday. It doesn't matter who you are. It can be Prince Charles and his full, if his foliage remains green. It will not worry in a year of drought or cease producing fruit. In other words, for the father you trust in God doesn't mean there will be no drought. But he's saying, when the drought comes, you shall not be worried. Oh. In other words, drought will come knocking. But because you are planted, you know who, whom you believe in. You know, your, you know the words of God. You know what God will do at the end of the day. You are not shaken because you know whom you believe in. Hello, somebody. I trust him, but I'm still feeling heat. I trust him, but I'm still feeling heat. So, when you trust God, doesn't mean you're not going to go through the heat of life. Yes, you trust him, but that does not, you know, exclude you from going through the heat of life. Life will interrogate you. Everyone here, whether you like it or not, even if you have a wilderness eyes, one day you will cry. Hello, somebody. Whether you like it or not, one day, everybody, you may have all the masculine nature. Hello, somebody. You may look like an outwash nigga, look like the man, but one day you will cry. But we pray that it will not be in a bad day. So learn to trust God. He will be like a tree planted by the water. Yes, I am going through hell, but I'm, I'm a tree. I'm planted by the water side. The PowerPoint is going to close. So, the question is, when you're going through hell, are you planted by the water side? When your vision is rejected, are you planted by the water side? This is why I close, even though I have not concluded my, this message. How did Moses respond when he arrived at the breakdown stage? Hello, somebody. How did Moses respond? When he was rejected, he went to God. Can we see that scripture? He went to God. Hello? He, will be, he was rejected and said, look, you've come to kill us. Though he went to God with anger and with disappointment, but what matters is this, he went to God. He didn't go to man. 
Have you been in a situation, you don't know who to go to. Even the people you should be going to are rejecting you. Moses said, what am I going to do? He ran back to God. So Moses went back to the Lord and asked, Lord, why have you caused trouble for these people? And why did you ever send me? But the revelation here is he went to God. It doesn't matter how he addressed God. But what matters, he knew where his source came from. Where does my help come from? David went to the mountain. He said, where does my help come from? He was looking for help. He said, my help comes from, help, from God who made what? Heaven and earth. It, it seemed to me he was looking for help somewhere, horizontally. But then he quickly discovered that his help is on the vertical level. And sometimes you're mad with yourself and you're mad with God and because you're mad with God, you quit from God. Hello? Some people, you quit from the one who will deliver you. If you go to the world, have the problem been solved? Not at all. Hello, somebody? I am mad. Okay, I am mad. It doesn't matter how mad I am. I must still come back to God. Because if I go to the street, my problem will increase. So I better come to the altar with my madness. And say, Father, I'm your son. And I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not happy today. Hello, somebody. God is not going to say, shut up your mouth. Why are you saying you're not happy? He will be patient and listen to you. Hello, somebody. He will be patient and say, tell me about it. What is the problem? And Moses said all that he wanted to say. In fact, look at verse, is it verse 22 again. Verse 20, 23 said, ever since I went into Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has caused trouble for these people. Now, does it mean the name of God brought trouble? Hello, somebody. Sometimes the devil wants you to believe that because you are praying and worshiping, that is why you're having trouble. You see, ever since I went into Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has cast trouble for these people. And you have not delivered your people at all. I expected God to shut up, Moses. What do you know? But God didn't say it in verse 6 1. And that's my last scripture, verse 6 1. God said, Okay, see what I'm going. Chapter 6 1. He said, Okay, don't worry. See what I'm going to do. He said, But the Lord replied to Moses, Now, nah, you prince, you, nah, I, nah, you are going to see what I will do to Pharaoh. He will let them go because of my strong hand. He will drive them out of his land because of my strong hand. Keep going, verse 2. He said, Halabu Zikaprande. He said, Then God spoke to Moses, telling him, I am Yahweh. And then verse 3, what is he said, I appeared to, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty. But I did not reveal one thing to them, but I did not make my name Yahweh known to him. He said, Joseph, Joe Moses, you've cried out to me. You've expressed how you feel, but I'm going to tell you one thing uh, as a point of what I'm getting ready to do in your life. I will reveal to you what I never revealed to your parents and to your great-grandfather. He said, I reveal my name. Go to verse 2 again. Galaboro Zikraba. Go to verse 2. Then God spoke to Moses telling him, I am what? Yahweh. This was a new revelation when, when Pharaoh refused to let them go. Hello, somebody. So God began to unveil to Moses what he never unveiled to Abraham, what he did not unveil to Jacob, what he did not unveil to Isaac. Because of that hardship, God said, I'm going to give you a dimension of revelation as a sign of what I'm getting ready to do. Hello, somebody. In that difficulty, God is about to show you something you haven't seen for years. So am I talking to somebody? Though you are going through difficult problem, but that difficult problem is going to create something good for you. Out of that difficulty, God said, now nah, I will show you something you do not know. I have another name, and that name is called Yahweh. And I never made it known to your father 
but I'm going to make it none for you because I got something for you. You got a job to do for me. It's, it may be getting difficult now, but the reason it's difficult is because there is another revelation coming. Am I talking to somebody? Another dimension is coming. A new power is coming. God is about to do something new in the name of Jesus. Hey! Kalabose kataya barada. In verse 1, go back to verse 1. He said, and then after all the complaining and all the nagging and angry, God said, Joseph, Joe Moses, I have listened to you. I'm not against you because you're nagging at me. Because I created you. I know that someday you may nag at me. That's okay with me. I can handle it. Help me talk to your wife and say to her, I can handle that nag. Ho, 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 ho. Come on, help me talk to somebody. He said, I can handle it. He said, but the Lord replied to Moses. The Lord was not angry for Moses for accusing his name. He replied to Moses. But the Lord replied to Prince, now you are going to see. Say to somebody, you will see. What I will do to your Pharaoh in the name of Jesus. There are some of you in this season, the Lord is saying, I should announce to you, now you are going to see what I'm going to do with that vision. What I'm going to do with that prayer. What I'm going to do without your intention. Now you are going to see. You have made hell and high water on your way to make it happen. But the Lord says to somebody, now you will see that indeed I am the Lord. He will let them go because of my strong hand. He will drive them out of his he will he will drive them out of his land because of my strong hand. Anytime God wants to compare the enemy, he uses a strong hand. Am I talking to somebody? And in this season, the Lord Almighty is about to compare Pharaoh to let you go. In the name of Jesus, you've been in Egypt for, for 300 years. You've been in Egypt for 30 years. You've been in that workplace where you have been oppressed for the last 15 years. But the Lord says, I should let you know, now I am coming to compare the enemy to let you go. In the name of Jesus, I say your enemy is going, is going to let you go. You are battling with some things in the spirit realm. And it looks like there is nobody. There is no uncle. There is no sister. There is no brother. But the Lord said, now see, I'm going to do something new that will baffle the nations in the name of Jesus. Yes, I may not have a brother. I may not have a sister. There is no anti-coming. And nobody believe in me. But the Lord is saying, after all these years, I see you toy with your love. But now I've come with a strong hand, with outstretched arms to help you. Is there anybody here that been crying in the last days, in the last months, and saying, Lord, where are you? I've been battling with my Pharaoh, but it's unshifting at all. The Lord said, I should let you know that I have come down just for you. I'm about to do something that will baffle your generation here and more. I will not let, let you to be disgraced in the hand of Pharaoh. I have destined Pharaoh to be destroyed. I have destined Pharaoh for destruction. And you are the man that he's going to use. You are the woman that he's going to use. You may face some frustration. You may suffer some affliction on your road to greatness. But the Lord is saying, this is the time I've determined to do something new. Something you are not even expecting. I will do it. And for me to do it, I'm about to review something new to you. I'm about to give you a new key, a new name, a new power, a new revelation, a new vision. I will give you something new. With this name Yahweh, you will overcome what you're going through. Am I talking to somebody? The Lord is about to reveal a better name. A name he did not reveal to your father. He will reveal to you. Some of you here, you will fulfill what your father never fulfilled. What your mama never fulfilled. You will do better than your generation. In the name of Jesus, God is about to take you far and farther beyond your contemporaries because he's revealing a new thing to you. 
I say he's about to reveal a new thing to you, a new glory to you, a new name to you, a new empowerment in the name of Jesus. Yes, you've been crying, but a new thing is coming. What you do not know is because what you do not know is this. God is planning something for you. Even while you are crying, he is more closer. In chapter 5, you were crying. But in chapter 6, God came down and said, I got a plan. In other words, God is more closer and nearer than you know. There are some of you here. God is about to solve that problem. In the name of Jesus. You've been crying out in chapter 6. But in chapter 5, but what you do not know that soon after that complaint, soon after that pain, soon after the emotional breakdown, soon after that confusion, God is waiting for you in chapter 6. Am I talking to somebody? He's waiting for you in chapter 6. Some of you are in the precipice of your breakthrough. Am I talking to somebody? You are very close to what he's gotten ready to do. All he's saying to you, don't give up this faith. Don't give up your believing system. Don't give up your praise. Keep praising the Lord. Help me talk to yourself that no demon dare steal my praise. Am I talking to somebody? It doesn't matter what you're going through. Keep your praise alive. Help me talk to yourself. I will keep my praise alive. I will keep my worship alive. I will keep my passion alive. I will keep my hunger alive. Yes, the enemy has come after me. But I dare believe in him. I say, I believe in him. I believe in him. The hell has broken loose against me. You hell, I came tonight to you. It is too late for me to give up. Because I encountered God in the burning bush. Even though I'm complaining right now, I still have experience in Him. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, I am complaining. Yes, I am having funny at this time. But I still remember that three years ago, I encountered Him at the burning bush. And there he spoke to me. I still carry that word in my heart. I still carry that word in my spirit. I knew what he told me when he spoke to me. I had an encounter with God. So you devil, you dare not talk me out of what God have taught me years ago. Because I met him face to face. Am I talking to somebody? I met him face to face. God said to Maria, He said, Who are you to talk to Moses, my servant, like that? Don't you know that I talked to other prophets? But as for Moses, I met him face to face. As for Moses, I can't tell him face to face. It doesn't matter what he's going through. I got his back because he is the only man I've spoken to. Am I talking to somebody? You may be crying now, but remember God have met you years ago. And that voice is still on. That voice is still alive in the name of Jesus. Somebody turn it to prayer. Hallelujah. Turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Jesus, you called me. The enemy can't steal this vision. I said the enemy cannot steal this vision. Somebody turn it to prayer. The enemy can't steal my children. They can't steal my life. They can't steal my business. They can't steal my calling. Somebody turn it to prayer. They can't steal it. It is too late. It is too late for the enemy to steal what God told me years ago. It is too late for the enemy to steal my glory. Somebody turn it to prayer. The enemy, you have battled me, but you cannot win. 
You battered me in the last years, but you are not going to win because I carry a revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ in my powers. I carry his word in my spirit. There is something I carry. You cannot steal that and you cannot have that experience. Somebody praise him. 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 